so of. It happened at a CMHA property, and I found out about that through speaking with Detective Jacob, Sergeant Jacob, excuse me. So that happened June 11th, and with that, I will turn it over to Sergeant Jacob. Good afternoon, thank you for being here. We became involved on June 11th of this year. Our officers responded to 12900 Superior Avenue in East Cleveland for a male that had sustained a gunshot wound to the back. Upon arrival, on-scene officers learned that our victim was actually shot with a shot, sawed-off shotgun and began to render first aid to him. The victim was transported to university hospitals for serious injuries. On-scene officers were able to get a brief description of our suspect, Lorenzo Watson. Our further investigation revealed that Lorenzo Watson is the male responsible for shooting our victim in the back with a sawed off shotgun. We believe he does frequent the area of 12900 Superior Avenue in East Cleveland um, and should be considered armed and dangerous at this time. Any information leading to the location or arrests would be greatly appreciated. As we have learned, there are numerous other um, criminal acts that Lorenzo is involved in. So Jeremy Young, Cleveland Heights, uh, Captain of the Detective Bureau. On June 20th at uh, nine in the morning, we became involved with uh, Mr. Lorenzo Watson. Uh, we received a call at 9 a.m. of a male who was um, covered in blood in the roadway. Officers responded, uh, found a male with severe head trauma uh, he was taken to the hospital. Uh, we learned that the assault occurred inside a residence on Glenmont Avenue in Cleveland Heights, conducted a search warrant, uh, obtained a mini sledgehammer inside that was used for the assault, uh, interviewed witnesses and identified the prime suspect as Lorenzo Watson. He currently has a warrant out for his arrest for felonious assault with our agency, uh, looking to indict for attempted murder. And uh, through communication with our partners, we talked to CMHA police and also uh, Commander Marche with East Cleveland Police and found out that uh, he was involved with other crimes. Uh, Detective Sergeant Holcomb, East Cleveland Police Department. This incident took place on Monday, June 12th, 2023 at approximately 0450 hours in the morning at 1651 Delmont. Uh, uniform officers responded to 1651 after receiving multiple calls of a male victim of a gunshot wound. Upon arrival, uniform officers uh, located the male laying in the street who seemed to be uh, shot in the abdomen by a parent shotgun. The male victim was able to communicate to uniform officers that he was shot inside of 1651 Delmont. Uh, he was transported to University Hospital by East Cleveland Fire Department paramedics for treatment. Uh, detectives didn't learn the male's identity until Tuesday, June 13th, 2023. He was uh, sedated with a breathing tube at the time in ICU at University Hospital for approximately two to three weeks. Detectives did not get an opportunity to talk to the male victim until Saturday, July 8th of this year, where he was administered a blind photo array where he picked our suspect male, Lorenzo Watson. And our victim stated, quote, this man shot me close range with a 12 gauge shotgun to my stomach and left me to die. Hi, good afternoon. Commander Joseph Marche with the City of East Cleveland Police. Um, I became involved with this case on July 6th, 2023 at approximately 3.31 in the morning. A uniformed patrolman received a call of a male victim of a gunshot wound at 14,000 Terrace. Um, he was located uh, on the seventh floor, uh, actually apartment number 706. 
Um, East Cleveland EMS arrived on scene. Um, the male uh, had no signs of life, and he was eventually at 551, I believe it was, uh, pronounced deceased by University, University Hospital medical staff. Um, there were three individuals that were involved in what we believe was uh, an aggravated robbery. Um, it's gonna be two males, one of them being Lorenzo Watts, Watson, and the other being a female who is currently in, uh, in custody at this time. Uh, there was a knock at uh, this gentleman's door. Um, our victim just happened to be inside this apartment. Uh, he finally answered the door after several attempts were made uh, with the female knocking on the door. He answered the door and uh, looked to his right, saw two of the suspects. Uh, Watson was actually standing behind him at the time. Um, this is all captured on video. He turns around and uh, is immediately shot um, by our uh, suspect, who is later identified as Lorenzo Watson. Um, we're still actively investigating this, and um, he is also a person of interest in several other violent crimes within the city. Um, so he is uh, a menace, and we need to get him uh, taken into custody as soon as possible. Good afternoon, Chris Snack with the Northern Ohio Violent Fugitive Task Force. Uh, while our investigators are currently pursuing leads and attempting to make arrests, uh, Mr. Watson, we are reaching out for the public's help in this matter. Um, Mr. Watson is obviously an extremely dangerous individual. Um, we highly recommend that you do not approach him, but instead call your information in to one of the various tip lines. Uh, you can reach the marshals directly at 866-4WANTED. Um, that information will be delivered directly to our investigators working the case in the field. Uh, the Marsh Service has offered to put up an additional $5,000 in addition to the 5000 already put up by our partners here. Uh, any information you can give us would be greatly appreciated in this matter. Thank you. One aggravated murder with us. Um, we have a, an active uh, warrant issued right now for aggravated murder, um, as well as uh, aggravated robbery. We as well had an attempted murder warrant out after the invaded home this morning. And Cleveland Heights currently has a warrant out for felonious assault. And where does he live? I mean, is there a specific city that he lives in? So people should be looking out for it. Sounds like he's kind of all over. Yes, he is mobile. He's not staying in one specific place because he, he has to know that law enforcement is looking for him. Does he have a lengthy criminal path? He does. He does. Um, I believe he's currently on federal probation. Is that correct? That is correct. Yes. Yeah. For? For drugs and weapons, sir. Okay. He's currently on supervised release through the um, federally for guns and weapons, guns and drugs. Or does there seem to be some sort of motive in any of these? 
We believe that our homicide is uh, was orchestrated by this uh, this other female suspect, and it was it was supposed to be a an aggravated robbery that eventually turned into a homicide. Um, but we believe that they knew what, exactly what they were doing um, before they went to the seventh floor and, and did it. Um, I don't know about uh, Delmont. The residence in question uh, is not abandoned because it's owned, but from what we've learned through investigation, the victim in this incident walked up to the door and uh, simply knocked or was going to enter. He may have been a squatter and he was just hit at point blank range with the shotgun. It's just thankful that he's still alive. So in his past, did he exhibit this kind of behavior? He's got an extensive criminal history, violent criminal history, yes. Okay. Do people in these areas still argue about Well, ma'am, that's why we're here. We want people to contact the police when they see them. Don't confront them. Call the police. If you see something, say something. Can you guys just talk to, I mean, that is a short period of time in a very violent crime spree. Can you talk to how important it is to get them off the streets? Because, I mean, based on what the timeline you just told us, it seems like this will happen. That seemed like his um, spree was escalating. You know, he started with an intentional rape assault and as an attempted murder on that time, um, even in you know, prison. Um, so it was important you know, to try to stop this before the next thing started. Pat, I believe that the uh, they can remain anonymous, correct? That is correct. That is correct. So they don't, uh, the tipsters don't have to worry about um, being identified by by this guy or or any of his his uh, associates, um, and still will be able to um, talk in confidence to Crime Stoppers and and be able to collect their their reward. One more quick question. I know you guys said when these all happened, but did any of these happen like in broad daylight or during the day? Or was it all early morning, late at night? Our assault was 9 o'clock in the morning. It was inside a house. Um, when the victim, he ended up crawling out a second story window onto a roof, jumping onto the driveway, going down the roadway, and neighbors called. And they saw him standing outside, covered in blood. And it was 11 o'clock in the evening. And both of our crimes occurred uh, uh, late night hours. Um, the homicide occurred at uh, 3.31 a.m., or at least that's when we got the call. Uh, and uh, Delmont, I believe, was... Uh, it was 0.450 hours. Yeah. 4.50 a.m. Not, not right now. And that, uh, that's not going to identify okay. um, him anyway. Thank you. Thank you very much.